Hey, this is Kit Cabello of Hard Lens Media. I'm joined here today with Candace Chukane. She is a member of the People's Socialism and Liberation uh, Party. So, essentially, uh, during our Facebook live stream, uh, you mentioned that your family immigrated here from the United States and they had to deal with a lot of trials and tribulations. Essentially, what was that uh, like for them and what were they hoping to uh, achieve here in the United States? Uh, yeah, so my mom was pregnant with me at the time when they came to America and she just thought it would be the best way for me to have the most opportunities because growing up in a third world country, they, um, they didn't have like a lot of access to resources and my father was um, like a PhD student at the time in computer science so they bought into the idea that America had the most opportunities, especially technologically. Now, uh, uh, before you were born, there was, of course, a huge election between uh, two different parties in regards to uh, how that country was going to be governed. One of them was backed by the United States. Can you please describe uh, to our viewers, uh, essentially, what was that election about, and who were the two uh, individuals who were running for president at the time? Yeah, um, so in British Guyana, uh, Chetty Jagan, he was a Marxist-Leninist, and at the time, he had the People's Progressive Party, and it had united all the... Um, farmers and workers in Guyana because there's usually a division between Indian and black workers because after uh, slavery was abolished there uh, they brought in Indian workers as cheap labor as indentured servants which essentially they were just kidnapped and enslaved from India and brought to Guyana so a lot of the black farmers had blamed the Indians for um, driving down the wages that they could have earned themselves um, so the People's Progressive Party had united both the blacks and Indians um, for a united working party. And um, once they, the British government had come in and shut down uh, the Constitution as, after they found out about like Chetty Jagan being prominently a communist. Um, so then the U.S. and British governments backed uh, Forbes Burnham, who was part of the PPP, and um, they formed the people, uh, PNC. Uh, to run against them, and they weren't like predominantly communist. And um, when your family decided to immigrate here to the United States, um, how was their uh, treatment in regards to uh, coming into this country? Um, when they, I mean, they couldn't find work. They had to stay with various friends, and uh, they were at a point where they were about to leave. But then. Uh, my dad found a contract job at the last minute, and he moved to Chicago actually without um, without us and left us in Miami. And he came here and worked, and then he eventually found a permanent position and was able to move us up here. And in regards to what's happening right now with uh, President Trump's administration and his hostility and uh, harsh policies towards those who are immigrants, what are your initial concerns uh, about the future for um, uh, immigrant families here in the United States? I mean, he's emboldened racists and bigots against them, and there's an increased amount of raids and um, definitely like policies that won't help them uh, join the working force or um, I guess doesn't help their rights in any way. And uh, why did you join the, the PSL, and uh, how is it going to help out with in regards to uh, protecting uh, immigrant families and also uh, helping promote uh, progressive populist ideals? Yeah, the Party for Socialism and Liberation I joined because, um, A, my parents are immigrants, uh, I'm a student, I'm uh, currently getting my master's in public health. So definitely like healthcare is a huge issue for me. And then also just the protection of the environment because this is the only place that we know that humans can live and without protecting it, um, we won't be able to live or thrive. And uh, what are your uh, concerns about Trump's policies? And uh, do, you, do you believe that there is at least strong enough resistance within the current Democratic Party to essentially stop any of these policies from being enforced? I mean, they haven't done anything. They say they're the resistance, but they still, um, you know, they support, uh, especially his, like, war agenda. They support that, and they haven't done anything resistance-wise. I mean, when they were initially voted to repeal Obamacare, the Democrats were celebrating because they thought it meant that maybe in the next election they'll have more seats in Congress. They weren't upset about uh, what it would do to working-class people at all. Um, and in regards to... Um 
uh, dealing with uh, the, the hostility, especially what happened in Virginia, what are your concerns about uh, future protests or rallies since there's now uh, legislators at the state and federal level that are proposing bills to basically punish protesters or say that it's okay to ram through a crowd of protesters? What are your thoughts on that? I mean, the fact that Trump won't come out and publicly denounce um, the violence that the right takes out on the left and the popular media equates them as being equivalent, saying like they both are, like that's concerning, but I mean, I think we need to continue. And I don't think it would deter the left at all, or our party at least. And uh, what do you want to tell our viewers and subscribers about um, at least the trials and tribulations that at least immigrant families have to deal with here in the United States, like something that they, they don't fully understand? I mean, a lot of these immigrants and refugees are forced um, to leave their homelands because of the globalization and imperialist wars and um, authoritarian rulers that are backed by the U.S. themselves. And, you know, it's not, um, I mean, like animals tend to migrate naturally, but like this isn't a natural migration. They're forced out of their homelands. And um, what, what are your hopes, at least? What are your, uh, what, what's, what's giving you hope in regards to uh, perhaps stopping some of these harsh policies towards um, immigrants and their families? I mean, the general resistance, like through um, the party that I'm with or the People's Congress of Resistance that's coming up, uh, people aren't giving up. Like when the ban first came on, people shut down airports. Like that's a major, shutting down transportation is a huge thing. So the fact that everyone is willing to unify and come together and do that type of thing is what gives me hope. And when is the People's Congress of Resistance Summit? Yeah, so it'll be September 16th and 17th in Washington, D.C. at Howard University. Well, thank you so much, then, for joining Hard Lens Media. And to all our viewers, peace.